Good evening, everybody. All right. We're going to do just a quick review. Um, we did this. We did the uh, entry and exit strategy session not too long ago, but I'm going to go back through it because there was a lot of questions today with people, uh, obviously, a uh, few uh, new people that have come into the uh, chat room, wanted to find out, well, if our trade executed, what, why was that? What should we be doing with the market now? So I'm just going to go through a quick review of what the quadrants are for getting into a trade. So using the candlestick signals, obviously our first priority is finding the best trades. The next is what confirms getting in into, into or out of those trades at the most optimal time. So because we have the graphics, the candlesticks that show us the signals and the patterns that tell us of, that we're in high probability trade setups, it just becomes common sense analysis. What does the candlestick signals tell us and is there a change of investor sentiment? So if I've got my picks, and this is why we, uh, one major priority is to teach everybody how to use their uh, scanning techniques to have a, a supply of trades each day. So the reason we want everybody to have their own supply of trades is I put out the two or three uh, picks every day because once I go through my scanning, I narrow it down. Uh, based upon our scanning cultivation process, to what I think are the best two or three trades for the next day. However, you've got to remember a couple statistics. One is even if you have the best trading strategy in the world for showing you good trade setups and even stretching it to say, well, I'm not stretching, but in my case, Obviously, I'm an advocate of candlestick signals. But there's one major criteria that you always have to keep in mind. That even if you have an extremely good percentage probability that you're going to be in a good trade, it's a percentage probability. So that even if you have 70% of your trades are going to work out effectively or positively, and I tell people that, that positive may be three-tenths of 1%, or it might be 300%. You don't know when the trade is put on. But the other criteria is 30% of your trades aren't going to work. So what do you do to try to improve the probabilities of being in the correct trade at the correct time? And that is using the quadrants that we have set up for how the market opens each day. So if we're looking at a – if we've done our scans – and we see that the next day, the pre-market futures are showing that the market is still heading in the direction we think it should be heading. In this case, if we're in an uptrend, obviously we think the market should be opening higher. And our stock that we're looking at that is confirming a buy signal is opening higher, we want to be buying pretty much immediately. When I say pretty much immediately, I want to see how that, that uh, stock opens. Um, before jumping into it. And that doesn't necessarily mean that if it opens positive, I'm buying right on that tick. Pretty much means if it opens positive, I'll give it 20, 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, to see if they're taking it down immediately or taking it down and then starting back up. But I'm probably going to be buying pretty quick because that's what the market and the signal is telling me. On the other hand, if the market opens higher and our stock price opens lower, well, that's not quite what we want to see. We obviously want to see strength in that that uh, that stock price because it should be uh, trading higher. So what you can do is you just wait, and if it opens lower, bobbles around, and then starts coming back up, especially coming up through the previous day's close, what's what type of visual uh, candle are you seeing? You're seeing another white candle or another positive candle. You can be buying then, seeing that the, uh, the buyers have stepped in. Let's see. If the market opens lower, 
like today, and the stock prices, or the stock price is opening higher, you don't have to jump in immediately. Give it a little bit of time. See what that price is going to do. Because uh, we don't know whether that, that stock price is going to be affected by the market trading off. So even if it opens higher, I'll probably give it more, more time. Now, if it holds steady, eh, I'll sit there and watch it. If it starts backing off, okay, I don't need to do anything. But if it's hovering there and then starting to move positive, even if the market is uh, heading down, then I'll jump in. How long is good? It all depends. If the uh, pre-market futures are showing the market's going to open up down 100 points and it takes three, five, seven minutes for the market to get down 100 points, yeah, I'm going to sit around and wait to see what happens until I see the market has bottomed out. But if the if I see that the stock that I'm watching opens slightly positive and the market's heading down and it's starting to slowly tick upwards, not showing any weakness, yeah, I might go ahead and start buying some. Now, I might not buy a full position right then. I might buy a half a position. And if it continues higher despite the market going down, buy another another half. But I don't need to jump in right away. I can see, see what the... Uh, markets doing then obviously if the market is opening lower and the uh whoops we just did that one the market opens lower and the stock price that you're watching opens lower eh, telling you it's not time to, to buy just don't do anything so what do we want to see if we see a buy signal and we're ready to buy we want to see if the bulls are in there the next day. That that sets our entry strategy in, in motion. And what do we want to see? What do we expect after a buy signal or a buy pattern, like a little scoop type pattern? Upside. Where do we now? We once we uh, are in it, where do we not want to see it uh, close? Back below the T line. That that negates that uh, buying. If we see a buy signal and it gaps up, that's even more more confirmation. We want to get in fairly quick because that's new power coming into that price move. Or if we didn't get it here and we didn't get it here, we're buying here because it's kind of confirming everything that's happened right before. So that's kind of how you keep yourself from getting into a position uh, and you still need to see what the whole general uh, market conditions are before we're jumping in, uh, into that position. So with that, uh, Jim, let me close out the uh, these charts, and I'll go to the live charts. There we go. Yeah, when you're ready, Jim. All right, so as we can see in the Dow, when we broke out, that's, that was the, that's the 2,000 or 20,000 mark. We kind of broke through this little downtrend as well as kind of this resistance level. That told us we were wave one, wave two, going into wave three. So once we're in a wave, now we have another criteria that we can simply apply to our analysis is we don't want to see the, uh, the trading close back below the T line. So today we are watching, and again, here's one of the uh, magical things about the T line. I say magical, kind of the Fibonacci aspect of the T line. Notice where the Dow closed today. Right smack dab on the T line. And when I say that, it's because the amount of people that have the T line on their charts has to be so minutely minuscule that it doesn't mean anything to most people, or doesn't I mean people aren't aware of it. It's just kind of a natural support 
or resistance level. So the fact that nobody has this on the, their chart, when we have it on our chart, the Dow closed right smack dab on that one. That's because that was a natural place to, to close. Same scenario with the NASDAQ, right on the T-line. So what's our analysis when we see something like this? We've got to take everything into consideration. Which direction is the market moving? Nice steady uptrend. What's the characteristic of this uptrend? Well, it comes up for a month, has some profit taking. Comes back up above the T-line for a month, some profit taking. Up above the T-line for a month, some profit taking. What's the whole nature of this uptrend? It's in this slow, steady uptrend or channel, and it's still in an uptrend, yes. So is there a possibility that if we wake up tomorrow and we see the pre-market futures down 50, uh, 50 or 60, and the uh, NASDAQ down 15, 20. Yeah, what's our next criteria? We probably want to look to see whether it's going to come up or back off to the support level. There's three support levels in here that we can visualize. One, the 20, light gray line. Now, why is that a support level? 20 becomes much more uh, relevant the longer a trend remains in a consistent progress. Two, we can see the trend support level. And three, we can see the 50-day moving average. Uh, Gordon, you probably have people out there that use Elliott Wave, and they have kind of figured it out, and they're probably asking, why isn't everybody using Elliott Wave. Other people are using the Fibonacci numbers, and uh, they're saying, why aren't people using Fibonacci numbers? Um, so statistically, this will get off a little bit, uh, a little bit off course, is you got to remember how many people are using technical analysis. Pretty much 90% plus of all investments are made based upon fundamental reasons. That's because I would guess probably 90% or plus are the big, big money institutions, whether the pension funds, hedge funds, whatever. Um, and they're all being bought and sold based upon the analysis of a sector or a company, and that's the reason for buying. That means let's say 10% of all trades are done based upon technical analysis. Now, in technical analysis, as I mentioned, you've got Fibonacci numbers, trend lines, moving averages, uh, Bollinger Bands, all sorts of technical reasons why people trade. You've got candlesticks. So um, in the past, I've been always or quite often asked, well, if you're teaching a bunch of people how to use candlesticks, won't they... Like anything else, the more people that use them, the less effective they become. I would guess out of the 10% of the technical trading out there, that the number of people that are trading off of candlesticks are probably one-tenth of one-tenth of one-tenth of one-tenth and probably a few more one-tenths of a percent of all the traders out there. And probably right now, that same minuscule number is even less than that is using the T-line. So that's a long answer to say people have all sorts of technical indicators that they use. The T-line is just one of them. So what makes it uh, effective for us is the evidence, the visual evidence of what type of candlestick signals and patterns we have that, that come off the uh, T-line. All right, so that's, if we keep going like this, you'll be here until 2 o'clock in the morning. So knowing that we were in an uptrend, but you can see that with the gap up, there was a possibility of looking for some profit taking. So the, the elements that I look at right now is whether are we heading down or heading up. 
and we won't know that until tomorrow because we've got indicators to tell us we could be heading down. That was a gap up in the overbought condition. And remember our criteria, if, uh, if we gap up in the overbought condition, start looking for a sell signal, just like if we see a gap down in the oversold condition, look for a buy signal. So that was criteria for looking for, uh, for, for some selling. But right now, we're still haven't closed below the T line. We're still in an uptrend. There was another one, and I forgot already. But right now, we, just, we don't know whether we're still in an uptrend or ready to reverse. So even with it gapping down today, that kind of that should have the first thing you should have been doing on the open is instead of going after positions, like we recommended uh, A E R I. Well, the fact that it was trading positive, which it should be, because it was coming out of a fry pan bottom. Remember our seventy thirty. If you were buying this one, that was the right thing to do. We couldn't tell that it was going to be backing off. But what was our? This is the other criteria of knowing what a pattern should be telling us what to do. That if we know we're in a fry pan bottom, what's our simple rule? You stay long as long as it doesn't close below the T line. It's camera, so we have to look at next day to see if it's positive. Yes, that was on the. Uh, uh, on the NASDAQ or the uh, the Dow, yeah, kind of a hammer signal. But look where it closed, right here on the T-line. What's our simple rule? We're in an uptrend as long as it doesn't close below the T-line. So to show strength, you want to see it uh, open positive. If it opened lower, what does that tell us? It tells us this doji gap down, that, that uh, fact of that price movement tells us we're probably still heading lower. So where's our next calculation? Again, maybe the support level, maybe the 20, maybe the 50. So when I say maybe, we can always see what it does at those levels. See if there's candlestick reversal signals. Okay, so when we on this one, if you got into it, yeah, not every trade that you're going to make is going to move in the right direction. So you go to your next criteria. What? Why, why were we buying? Because this looks like it could be a fry pan bottom breakout. What's happened in this fry pan bottom? Nothing yet. It still hasn't closed below the T-line. We also recommended ASNM because this had a very strong uh, reversal signal. Remember, the bigger the signal, the more compelling that there's, if it confirms we've had a reversal. So look how big our hammer signal is. Then we're followed the next day with a bullish engulfing. Then it gaps up through the T-line and breaks this little downtrending channel. And where did it did all yeah, where did it did all this? Where did it do all this? Right smack dab off the 50. Now nobody's watching the T-line because nobody has it on their chart. Everybody's watching the 50 to see what's happening at that level. We just happen to have the, uh, the visual capabilities to see exactly what's happening at those levels and let us know whether that's a reversal signal uh, or not. So we were buying today on the basis of uh, it being a positive uh, trade, but it did the same thing. Came up, came all the way back down. So here's another thing. I'm trying to, I'm trying to point out different little pieces of evidence to tell you what trend movement is happening. Today, this one came down. Use the T-line as support. Again, use the T-line as support that nobody has on their chart, just that natural support level, and came back up again. I think right now, if I'm not mistaken, even at 41, I guess they reported their earnings today. The T-line is the eight-day exponential moving average. The other uh, moving averages, the 20, the 50, and the 200, are the simple moving averages. Okay, we also recommended Hecla. 
because it was doing a little J-hook type pattern right in here. A little bullish engulfing bounce back off the T-line. Now, it traded lower, but if you bought it today, you stay long on this one, as long as it doesn't close below the T-line. Now, if it came back and closed below the T-line, what does it do to our J-hook pattern setup? Pretty much negates it for two reasons. Is it closed below the T-line, one, and it closed below the halfway point of the candle that told us the bulls were in control? Very simple logic from the Japanese race traders. If this is the candle that told us the bulls were in control, and the bears could close it more than halfway down that candle, that tells you the bears are still in control. Get back out of that trade. Then what does that do for our trend analysis? So if it closed down here, now I've got more suspicion that we might be in a slow down trend, which is exactly where we don't have, want to have our money sitting. So GPRO was another one that had, we'd let's see, did we recommend that? Yes, I already owned that one. What day did we recommend that one? Well, I don't see it. No, I bought it. But uh, you can see what's, what's coming from here. Fry pan bottom, your best friend signal right here. And what does that illustrate? One, that the 50 is not acting as uh, resistance anymore after kind of a T-line crunch. Two, fry pan bottom breakout. So three, where's our next target? As long as we stay above the T-line, more than likely we're heading up here. Uh, pretty fast. Uh, Elliot, yeah, I just did this on a quickie trade today. I bought the uh, this week, uh, February 3 weeklies this week. So I bought them at uh, 57 cents with the idea that if this pops over the next two or three days up here, my fifty-seven cents should go to about a dollar sixty, a dollar eighty, I think. Oh, on the twenty-third. I didn't flip back. I know we own it. I just couldn't see. Yes, on the twenty-third at nine fifty-seven. Yeah, they're now, I think, at 65 cents. Okay, so, uh, but I bought the calls late today. We own the stock, but I bought the calls late today just to tell you the option trade because this was kind of confirming exactly what this whole pattern was telling us uh, it should be doing. Kara, kind of the same scenario. You're in this big fry pan bottom. And so how long do you hold this So you see a sell signal? Now, we've had a doji. We've had a long-legged doji. Where would be the safe place to put a stop at this point? We wouldn't want to see it trade back below today's low because doji doji in the overbought area, if they came back down through here, where do you think they're heading back to? Back to the T-line. So they, uh, every time I look at a chart, Look at the stochastics. Oh, this is just driving me drink. Just put it, tell yourself, where should this not be trading if we're still in an uptrend? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, and the second is uh, uh, is the earnings for G-Pro. Uh, let's see. CLD. You can see the fry pan bottom. You can see the resistance level. And again, observe the obvious today. This pulled back. And where did it pull back to? Right smack dab to the T-line and came back up. So what would this tell us tomorrow in positive trading? We still have kind of a fry pan bottom, double bottom uh, breakout above the 50. It's more than likely going higher. Notice that it broke this down trending channel. And how did it do that? It's kind of a doji sandwich setup. So once again, the more things you can put into your evaluation of what's happening on the chart and adding 
more buy uh, signal confirmations, the higher the probability it's moving in the direction you want it to be moving. So notice what's happened here. We're just kind of T-line hugging the 200. This opened positive tomorrow. I'd be a buyer because that tells me the resistance level is gone, that we're now in, got the capability of moving much higher. And when I do have a good moving position, like we did coming out of this fry pan bottom and buying IVI, it still should be in a 45 degree, degree to the upside. So today it got a little bit iffy, but notice where it finally did close, back up above the 3T line. So very simply, if you're above the T line, you're in an uptrend. You're above the 3T line. You're still in a strong uptrend. Now, I'd be watching this one. What do I want to see it do from here? I want to see it trade positive. I get that you sell below the T line. Where I get hung up is if the stock, whoops. Oops, hold on, I gotta move. Price crashes intraday through the T line. Do you sell immediately or wait till the end of the day? Usually wait till the end of the day. Stock at 10.50, T-line at 10. Intraday price crashes to 8 and closes at 9. Should I have sold at 10? Uh, John, when we get to the end, pull whatever that was up. Um, the reason I wait to the end of the day is if I sell down here at 10.30 in the morning, it's already down here. So do I think it's going to crash big? Well, from, as we saw this morning with the market down at one time 200 points and then started waffling and coming back up slowly, I'll wait to the end of the day. There's a, uh, there are uh, classics showing overbought, so don't we sell? Yes, and that's why um, when we do the emotions uh, training is your exit strategies, how to come out. Because uh, I'm trying to think of one. I've, I've got one in here that I'll show you. That if you come out with it selling off, it comes down to that simple process of if it's time to sell, sell. But if it turns around and starts heading right back up again, don't be afraid to buy it right back again, even if it's a few pennies higher. Um, so on IIVI, if it didn't really, if it really did drop far, would you still wait until the end of the day or sell? That's still a function, Peter, of watching to see what the overall market is doing. When it was trading down here, the market was down a couple hundred points. So the market was already down a couple hundred points, and this was down. Either the market was going to go down 500 points, which I don't think it was going to do. I just wait to see what it does by the end of the day. Now, if it opens lower tomorrow, yes, I might uh, close this out with now the anticipation that they're going to maybe bring it back to the T-line. Even if they open it lower and brought it down, and then turn around and brought it back up. If it did another hammer signal, I could still get ready to buy it on the next day if uh, looking for the 45 degree. That would be the same if a stock dropped below the 8 EMA during the day. Yeah. Uh, let me, I've, I've, I think I've got some in here to kind of illustrate those, um, those points. I guess here's kind of an example that if I'm in an uptrend and it sells off down here early in the day, I'll give it to the end of the day. 
may have held on to it, may have held on to it, and then finally closed it here. But I wouldn't be, and I say I wouldn't be too proud. I say that because in the old days, if I sold out here and it turned around and went back up, my first inclination was uh, I'm not going to buy back in and let them trick, trick me back in so they can take it back down. At least I know now what what it should be doing below or above the T-line. So when we see this happening up here, what should we be doing? Well, we're still long, but we're watching for sell signals because where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. So anytime we see that gap up in an overbought condition, we start looking for the possible sell signals. Anytime you see that gap up, in an overbought condition, just watch to see if there's going to be some selling after that. Let's see. FCX. Here's a case where I would have probably have closed this out on the lower open because where would you think it's going to? Back to the T line. Where would uh, is it going to support on the T line? At this point, we don't know. We don't know whether they're ready to take it all the way back down to the 50. So I don't mind closing here or then buying back here the next day. So I missed out on a little bit, but when I sold it, it was telling me it was time to get out. When I bought it back, it was telling me it was time to be buying back, that it was supporting on the T line. So. That's what I always often mention is this is a 10 point move. I only get eight of those 10 points. That's fine with me because that means every time I was in it, I knew the probabilities I was heading in the right direction. So I would rather get eight points on a much, much higher correct trade ratio because the compounding effect will be huge versus trying to get 10 points on every time there's a 10 point move. Uh, let's see, Mobley had something that needed to. So here's a case, too, where if I uh, had Mobley after a bearish engulfing signal and it opened lower and started trading lower on a lower trading today, I would have closed it out. Probably as it was coming back down through the T-line. That didn't stop me, though, that when it came back up, I could be buying and or, now that I see it's back up above the T-line, be ready to buy it back on positive trading. Because if it starts trading positive from here, what's that tell me about the T-line? It's still acting as support. Yes. Uh, more simply stated, Bankar is... Uh, as long as you're above the T-line, the probabilities are you're heading up. If When you close below the T-line, the probabilities are you're heading, heading, heading lower. Again, that's just a probabilities confirmation. Uh, so I guess the most powerful aspect and most profitable aspect for me has been that if just the definition that if a candlestick signal is the graphic depiction of what's going on in investor sentiment, and the T-line is the natural support and resistance level of this investor sentiment, when you add those two together, you've got an extremely strong combination. So here's another one that if on XL, if I'd been long and it started trading down below the T-line today, I would have probably have closed it out. Because what? Why would we be holding it? Because it hadn't closed below the T line. But now we could see it was running out of steam. Market was down. It was trading down. It was time to close it out. Now, what's the pattern at that point? Really nothing. So I don't mind being out of this because it was a nothing trade that I'd been staying in based upon it hadn't closed below the T line. But with it trading lower. It was still giving more confirmation the buyers weren't there. Uh, let's see. Mobley. 
Well, your stochastics are still up here toward the overbought area, but they're not selling off. So if that's the question, Elliot, remember, we're not buying stochastics. We're buying price. And as long as the price stays above the T-line, the stochastics are going to still be moving in the uh, – uh, still be moving in the right direction. But XL held off above or on the T-line. I don't understand the question, but XL held off, held off above or on the key line. Well, it didn't during the day. I mean, we're starting to see weakness. The market was showing weakness, and it was trading lower. The Cassocks were heading down, and it wasn't showing anything. It was showing us any great pattern. So it's turned into a nothing pattern. There's nothing there anymore. Box. If you came out of it in the fry pan bottom, still hasn't been able to close below the T-line. Might have been a little bit scary during the day, but at that point, if it was trading right here, I would still said, all right, I need to give it to the end of the day because what was the history of this one? Hadn't been able to close below the T-line yet. Uh, Nugget also showed that the gold stocks started up today now we've got kind of a spinning top doji right here on the t line so this once again gives us a much more clear analysis of what should be happening as far as a price move based upon how it opens tomorrow if it opens lower what's it tell us about this whole trajectory more than likely it's coming back to test the, the 50. if it opens positive what's it telling us it's telling us that this trend channel is still in a in fact, we're still probably heading higher. So that's the advantage we have of knowing what should happen after a doji. Whoops, what did I do? So knowing what should happen after a doji at least allows you to interpret or extrapolate what's happening. And same scenario right here. H-I-I-Q, just absolutely sideways, holding up above the T-line. But what's the first thing to observe? It's been moving sideways. So this would still be a function tomorrow of how they open it. They have to open this positive to stay in it. If it opens lower, you've lost the trajectory, close it out and move on to something else. TKOS, perfect example. It was still above the T-line. It needed to stay above the T-line. With it gapping down today, I would have closed it out because what was what happened to our potential tra trajectory for a J-hook? It, it disappeared. IGT, kind of the same scenario. This was more to illustrate what you should have done Anytime you see that kicker type signal, now I guess this is uh, last week uh, one of the brokerage firms downgraded this. So if you're in an uptrend and they gap it down and can't bring it back up, close it out, but be prepared to buy it back in case you see the next buy signal. In this case, it never happened. But the fact that they gapped it down, told you, yeah, it's time to, to move on to something else. I would have watched to see what it did here at the 50 to see if they were bouncing it back up. Then you can think about uh, going back in. Is IGT? No. Oversold would be with it going back down below the 20. It's still, stochastics is still heading in a downward direction. OCLR, when it did the doji, hanging man, Bearish confirmation, where do you think it was heading to? The T-line. Now what does it have to do to stay in it? It has to open positive and stay positive. These are slow stochastics, 12.33. How do you filter out the stocks that are not moving? Well, you can see it. 
and you see something like this, you're in the overbought area and you're starting to see sell signals, yeah, it's not moving anymore. Take your profits and go on to something else or wait for the next buy signal. Or is it WC Fields that said best way to make money in the stock market is buy stocks that go up. If they don't go up, don't buy them. And CCJ, kind of the same scenario. It's lost its steam. If it opened lower tomorrow, you close out the position. It has to open positive and trade positive. But even then, it needs to trade significantly positive. Otherwise, the J-hook pattern that we were expecting on the breakout has disappeared. You don't do anything with this until the next pattern set up. Uh, is coming about. So here is one that broke out of our bobble pattern. Nice big breakout, then pulled back, then did a doji yesterday. What's our simple rule of a doji? It's going to move in the direction of how they open after a doji. The fact that they took it down, if you had gotten in here somewhere, this told you to get out because there's nothing left in this chart. To predict the next day move, we have to see previous day's candlestick. But how we predict if a stock will move in the intraday market? Is it the five-minute or hourly chart we need to focus on? To predict the next day's move is based upon if we cut this chart off back. Ah, you can cut this chart off right here at the doji. You know the simple rule of the doji. It has to open positive and trade positive. Now, at the end of the day, remember, what does your one minute, your five minute, your 10 minute, 15, 30 hourly chart tell you about investor sentiment? It's telling you what investor sentiment is going on right at that time. What's that have to do with the next day, absolutely nothing, because in 14 hours after this closes, there might be a completely different sentiment on the, in the market. How do you select stocks that have explosive move potential? Kevin, we kind of do that on the breakout uh, lessons. We're looking for the slow curves. We're looking for the fry pan bottom breakouts. There's, there's about seven or eight different patterns. Um, that you want to go after, uh, which the best way to track them all down is uh, book number two, High Profit Candlestick Patterns. Read through that. That's got the meat, meat of candlesticks in it. When we look at a 10-minute chart for, let's say, an next entry level, do we care about the T-line that shows on the 10-minute chart? Yes. Sure do. So if we're looking to, let's say, we thought it was going, the Dow was going to pop back up before the end of the day. So there's our 10-minute chart. Well, it finally popped here. So if I'm looking for a reversal, I'm still trading off the 10-minute chart on that reversal. If I'm trading crude oil, I use it. This is the ten-minute chart. Looking to see now. This isn't a great example because crude oil is kind of moving sideways. But if I'm trading in crude oil intraday, yeah, I'm trading off the. Uh, off the 10 minute chart. All right. Okay. Let me go through a few more here. Oh. Skipped a whole bunch of these. There are times when you really don't know what to do. So it comes down to one very simple application. There's our fry pan bottom breakout on PAW. What do we do with PAW at this point? 
Very simple. Just stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. Uh, swing Trader, the, uh, you can do the scans for uh, um, the sectors just as well as you can for stocks. Let me see if I can do this cleverly. Oh, this is a TC net, and I don't have quite the whole page on here, but this is pretty much the whole page. I've got the different uh, categories. And one of the categories is the Morningstar Industry Groups. So when I click on this, I think I'm on the bearish chart. I click on this, I can do scans for the sectors just as easy as I can for stock. So this is uh, apparently cable TV systems. This is discount variety stores. So I can go through and analyze which sectors are acting the best. This is electronics. So if I'm looking for the sectors, Again, this is, if I see the general market is heading up, I can scan to see which sectors are acting the strongest. And then once I see which sectors are acting the strongest, I can click on that sector and say, all right, which stocks are in that sector? This one. I can say, all right, which stocks in this sector? And I can click down on different stocks over here and see which individual charts look the best. So it's all putting your uh, uh, probabilities in alignment. That if the, you can analyze pretty accurately what each individual stock is doing, I'm sorry, which, what the market is doing, and you can analyze which sectors in that market are acting the best, then you can go and see which stocks in that sector are acting the best. Okay, so a lot of these are just kind of steady eddies. If you really don't know what to do with them, you just stay with one simple criteria. You stay long as long as they stay above the T-line. So we've got a bunch that we've recommended here recently that are still in uptrends. They just haven't been able to close below the T-line, so we just hang on to them. Did your scans give you any good stocks to buy options on? Yes, John, the, the uh, whole process is to find what your best trades are um, stock-wise. And then to buy an option is just another method of buying that stock. So it all depends on whether you're, you trade stocks or options or both. Uh, our scans are on TOS somewhere. Unfortunately, since I don't use the scans over on TOS, Swing Trader, that's something that you ask in the chat room during the day. Somebody will be able to give you instructions on how to how to do, do the scanning. So here's uh, KMT. Ever since our kicker type signal hasn't been able to close below the T line, you stay uh, uh, just stay long. Click. I mentioned last time the scans were available for Trade Station. Oh, uh, they are being made available, I think. I'm not sure if one of the uh, writers or one of the formulators uh, is still working on it. It should They should be available pretty soon. They've got the formulas. They're just trying to create the formulas for uh, TradeStation. I know they're available on NinjaTrader, uh, on Anchorswim. I don't know whether E-Trade has them. Most of them do. I mean, they've come to us and, you know, all the formulas are, any formula that you can develop for candlesticks is very simple. If you can verbally say it, you can write the formulas for it. Uh, click still in an uptrend. So I'm showing all these because these are all stocks that have not closed below the T-line. NVIDIA. They're all still trading above the T-line after buy signals. HBM, 
still staying up above the T line. Okay. I think I've got most of the ones that we're. Uh, so here's GLBS that needed to open positive today and trade positive. It closed right on the T line, which means you give it one more day, but it has to open positive and trade positive. If it opens lower and trades lower, now you've got this downtrending channel versus a J hook pattern. Uh, there's no real pattern on HBM, but ow. but it's still staying above the T line. So you've got wave one, wave two, wave three, wave one, wave two. As long as it doesn't close below the T line, you've got the potential of going into wave three. Do you go through a daily sector scan stock processing your trading room? Uh, Dan, you've got so many people in the trading room now that know how to do the different scans that usually uh, you've got enough ideas being thrown out at this point with good, uh, good traders out there already knowing how to scan that you have more supply of good trades than uh, uh, but it's not so that you just have good trades you go back and you look at the chart and see why that trade is acting well what all the parameters are ah uh, yes uh, Jim just put up there's a link to uh, uh, Ed C who did a lot of uh, scan writing of scan formulas. All right, a few that look good. I usually have a lot more, but look at LPG. Big bullish engulfing, belt hold type signal. Tells us there's more than likely going to be more upside. XXIA, this was more to kind of show how you had the scoop pattern. Now they've gapped it way up. Um, which is what you expect coming out of scoop patterns, a very strong price move. So anytime you see that scoop pattern set up, this is what you're kind of looking for. So once that scoop pattern is in effect, very easy how long to stay in it. So you see a sell signal and a close back below the T-line. And SGYP, kind of a scoop pattern. If it opens positive tomorrow, you can be buying. Because what do we expect coming out of a scoop pattern? Pretty much that slingshot effect to the upside. GTN, another one with, when they came back, used the T-line as support, bullish and golfing. Probably still in a good, strong uptrend. Oh, excuse me. It must be my monster drink. Bojangles. Here's one to keep an eye on. Anytime you see a flat trading range, and at the end of it, you see a morning star signal that acts like that little mini scoop pattern. Watch for a slingshot effect to the upside. NVRO, there's your J-hook pattern setup. So somebody was asking earlier, this would be more one that I would go after the options because of it being an $85 stock. That one on positive trading, I'd start looking at the calls or uh, maybe a, a call spread. Because if this is wave one, that same magnitude will be available for wave three. On the uh, downside, GBT, you can see how it's failed here at the 50 and sold off. This one you can start shorting because, once again, here's how you observe the obvious, which is the 50 is acting as a resistance level. You can see there's kind of a trend channel. So where's your next likely target? Down in this area at the bottom of the trend channel. Whoops, I did it here. FGEN. 
big bearish belt hold left right combo more than likely they're heading down to the 200 and TK dark cloud bearish confirmation right back into this area back here at the uh, 50 Uh, GLBS closed well below the T-line on the 10-minute. Could you sell, sell the, for the, sell before the bell? Uh, yeah, yes. You, you could have. And if you saw it was trading low or getting near the close, you saw they were selling it off, so it was still going to close near the low end of the range. Yeah, you could sell it at that point. And what would be the worst case scenario? It opens positive tomorrow, heads up, you buy it back. But right now, it just doesn't look like a good chart anymore. I think we did the AVXL. Oh, that's a good looking little chart depending on the volume is good um, uh, there was a little slow curve there so I'd be buying that one on positive trading tomorrow all right so that's kind of the uh, instructions of uh, you know, if you buy something for example this one traded up early in the day and then backed off and everybody was worried but at the end of the day, you pretty much want to just wait to see if they're going to close below the T-line. Now, have it had it closed below the T-line, what would that tell us about this whole, whole pattern? It wasn't coming out through this level. Uh, Mahi, I use uh, Thinkorswim. Um, uh, yeah, and you can, if you're... Uh, the TC2000 for the 29.95, which is a delayed at the delayed 20 minutes instead of live. But if you're if you're a uh, kind of a swing trader where you're trading on a daily basis versus uh, intraday, yeah, the uh, 29.95 gold system is is good. Now the biggies like Apple. Notice it opened right on the uh, T-line today and then traded up. So that's what I was telling the room there earlier today. Even though the stock was down, you can see there was buying still going on. That This was still a bullish chart because they were buying after it opened. And Amazon, same scenario. Even though it was down six bucks, five bucks today, it was an indecisive down and still above the T-line. Netflix. Just a nice, slow, steady uptrend. Nothing that I would trade at this point, but I, if I was long, I would stay long. And Tesla, same scenario. As long as it stayed above the T-line, you stay with this one. Okay, uh, let's see. On gold, gold, as you can see, look where it came down to. This is your typical price move. It breaches a resistance level. And once it goes to the resistance level, you watch to see if it's going to come back and use the resistance level as support. If it does, now you've got your next target, which is the next price move or the next uh, moving average. And Google, Google, that's kind of ugly. Google has not been a real good trader percentage-wise still kind of in a sideways mode on on this one so it's not your best looking chart uh, to trade okay are there any general questions on candlesticks crude oil still just sideways just really not doing any much of anything. All right.
Jim, do a double line. Just try to keep your questions to one or two. Oops, I've already scrolled way past. How does wave numbers of a chart relate to trending prediction? Uh, I only use wave one, wave two, wave three, Lee, because I'm not going to be in a trade long enough to worry about Elliott waves three, four, five, six, seven, retrace ABC. If this is wave one, this is wave two, now I'm looking for wave three. And wave three is over. I'm looking for a pullback, wave two, so it becomes wave one, wave two, then wave three. Tess, you can be buying this one on positive trading with it staying up above the T line. That's not what I want to do. ATI, as you can see, is pulling back very indecisively. If it opened lower tomorrow, I'd probably close it out because that tells me they're probably drifting back to the T-line. But then I'd have a buy stop up here someplace that if they turned it around and took it back up, that would be telling me the pullback was indecisive. Now I'm just waiting for the next buy signal. Select comfort, big bullish left-right combo. Wouldn't be a buyer yet, but if it opens positive, you could be buying this one. And nap. Another slow uptrend. That'd be a toughie to trade, though. Um, if you like it, you just stay long as long as it stays above the T line. Pro shares, same as the uh, S and P. It has to open positive tomorrow to stay long. J Nug, same as Nugget, needs to get up above the T line. You can see how it's kind of flattening out, but you still have this little slow curve. So it definitely needs to open positive tomorrow. Otherwise, it's kind of flat. And Bank of America, I've never traded Bank of America except a few years back. It had a good move. But it's just, it. I would guess right now it's moving sideways, kind of waiting for the 50-day uh, moving average to catch up. Colgate Palmolive. Eh. Nothing. I wouldn't be in it. You're in a downtrend. It doesn't move enough to even, it's one of those uh, uh, institutional traders that don't doesn't move around a lot. Fig, another one that I wouldn't be in just because you're moving sideways. If you like it right now, you stay long, but you have to watch to see what it does up here. But it's just not, not a trending chart. And Ba. Yeah, you can go short on this one, anticipating they on weakness they're going to bring it down to the 200. There's your kicker type signal, blue ice failure, making the 200 your next target. FTI, same scenario. Uh, I would suspect they're they're bringing this one down to uh, uh, the 200 day moving average. Where did I go to? OCN. Uh, OCN, uh, eh, it, it has to, if I was, yeah, if I was going to buy this one, it had to be up through the 50-day moving average. The only, uh, futures that were looking good was short uh, live cattle. I would suspect it's still coming down here to test the 50. That's about the only one that's moving around enough, and even that's not huge potential at this point. Facebook, stay long as long as it stays above the T line. Micron, stay long. Good chart. 
an A I R G. Eh, there's nothing really there. I'd be someplace else. Just a sideways channel. We did nugget. GSAT. This one you can buy on positive trading. I don't know what the volume is. Just make sure the volume is hefty. DRYS. Uh, boy. Got to get that big move off the chart. Even then. Nothing. Did it go bankrupt? Or was there a reverse split? That stock trading at 100 or just, uh, yeah, that's that was odd. This is when you catch one of these, that's when you start trading off the 10-minute chart. ELDD. Great Lakes, Drudge and Doc. You can stay long. Now that it's broken this downward trend, and notice how it did it with a doji gap up. Stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. And NCV. Nothing real wildly exciting, except you've got kind of an uptrend. Uh, same scenario, stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. CVI, you could yeah you can short it, but I'd be suspicious of this being the next uh, support level. So it doesn't look like a great short, not worth the risk reward. Uh, yes, it does have significance. That means they did a lot of profit taking and still took it up. So I would stay long on this one. Tiffany's, this one you can get ready to go short. Watch, see what it does at this level, but this looks like it's failing the 50, maybe heading down to the 200. Shaft, nice little slow curve breakout. Stay long on this one. USFD, left-right combo, follow up, up through the T-line, stay long, wave one, wave two, going into wave three. That's not a bad-looking chart. Let's see, we did NVIDIA. NVIDIA, as long as it stays above the T-line. See, we can make this a little bit more pronounced. Still in this uptrending channel. Microchip. Just stay long. Notice how it used the uh, key line as support today. SDRL. Stay short. Uh, you can't short this one because it's below five bucks. You shouldn't be in it, though. Potash. Potash, not a good looking chart. No move or no direction. I'd be someplace else. AMD needed to get back up above the T line, which it did. So you stay long. You can even still be a buyer this one on positive trading uh, tomorrow. TRMB. This one, if it opens lower after gapping down through the 50 in this little support level, if it opens lower, it's heading to the 200. DSBR. Uh, DSBR. Ooh, another one that has to open positive and trade positive to stay in it. If it opens lower, close it out, tells us that this resistance level is still acting as resistance. 
Cuervo, look at the scoop pattern. All you do is stay long on this one. Morgan, eh, nothing there. I wouldn't be long or short. You can see it's been sideways and still moving sideways. Yuri, stay long. You can see the fry pan bottom breakout. Look for a 45 degree to come off of here. I think we did, Kara. Stay long. Use today's open or low as your stop. That's, that's what you were asking. Blackstone. As long as it stays above the T line, you stay long. An LRCX. Low curve, stay long, but you definitely want to see this one straight flat or positive, staying above the T line tomorrow. TNA, nothing here if you're short. Eh, probably wouldn't even be short. Um, yeah, that's the short, uh, the bullish. Uh, yeah, you still have to see how this one opens tomorrow. And mags. Mags, you did the gap up shooting star. I would probably use today's low as my stop. It needs to open positive and trade positive to stay in it. AK Steel. Uh, if you're short, I would probably use, let's see, what did it close at 809? I'd probably mention this earlier, I'd probably use 815 as a stop. If it starts moving in that direction, it's at least bouncing up to test the T line, but I wouldn't buy it until it gets above the T line. City group, this one, uh, if it opens lower, you've got kind of a bearish J hook pattern uh, in progress. Uh, that's the Canadian dollar. Uh, nothing there that you could really get your hands on. Now it seems like we can see from the candles whether the stock will go up or down, but how much up or down? How would you predict? It's sometimes called the Nazi tool. No. A lot of times it's based upon the strength of the signal, like a doji gap up. The best friend is usually going to have a very strong price move. A kicker signal is going to have a strong price move. Uh, fry pan bottom breakout. So there are patterns that you can identify. What if you were short? This is where once you get into the oversold area, if you were short, you put your stop at the previous day's open. Because if there's enough strength to come up through there, that's where the buying has started. And Facebook. Just stay long as long as it stays above the T line. McDermott. Oops, Medtronics. And uh, nothing wildly exciting here just yet. Ooh, I don't know what to tell you there. I wouldn't yeah, right now I wouldn't be long or short. There's nothing there to get real uh, excited about. And S G Y. This one you get ready to go short on weakness tomorrow, kind of a bearish scoop pattern. Let's see. Add four reverse splits. Yeah. I don't know what happened where they went from four to 104 in four days. Nordic. Nothing there either. No direction. LOGM, uh, nothing there yet either. If I was going to buy, I'd probably be more apt to buy above this level. Right now, it's just a sideways chart. And Disney is still on a nice steady uptrend. See the slow curve? 
takes you back up to the top of the trend channel. Let's see, TRVN we did because it's sitting right on the, uh, the uh, 200. If it opens positive, you can be buying this one. All right, so it'll be important to see how they open this market tomorrow. Um, definitely want to see these uh, indexes open up positive. And right now, what it looks like, today's low came down and tested this resistance level. So what do they do? They come back to see if that resistance level is going to act as support. And so we'll have to see how it opens tomorrow. All right. With that, everybody have a good evening. We will see you bright and early in the morning.